Electron configurations are a way of writing where exactly electrons are located. So there's three rules that electrons follow when filling energy orbitals. Pauli's exclusion principle, the off-ball principle, and Hund's rule. Pauli's exclusion principle says an atomic orbital may describe at most two electrons. So since the S sublevel has one orbital, it holds two electrons. P, three orbitals, six electrons, and so on. The off-ball principle says the electrons enter the lowest energy first. This means that electrons will first enter the first energy level, and then the second energy level, and so on. So when we have an electron filling, it has to go down to the 1S first, it can't enter the 4s first. The electrons are lazy, they want to go to the lowest energy available. Within the same energy level, s is always the lowest, f is the highest in energy. But that only goes if it has the same value for n. And finally, Hund's rule says electrons do not pair up until they have to. So if electrons were entering this off-ball diagram, first they would enter the 1s, and I can fit two electrons in there. When the electrons pair up, they're going to have opposite spins. Because electrons do repel, that opposite spin minimizes some of that repulsion. It's still lower in energy to pair up than to go to the next energy level. So next we're going to go to the 2s. That one can hold two electrons. And then we would go to the 2p. That's where Hund's rule comes in. The electron would first go to the 2p orbital, and then it would not go to the same 2p orbital because of that repulsion. If there's an available 2p orbital that's empty, the electron would go there first. It's kind of like if you didn't have to share a room, you wouldn't share a room if there was an available room next door. And then the third electron would go to this orbital. Now that all of the 2p orbitals have one electron, then they would pair up before going to the 3s. Also notice our first energy level holds two electrons. Our second energy level can hold eight electrons. Our third energy level, we said earlier, can hold 18. It can hold 10, 6, and 2, giving us 18. So we're just identifying more precisely where those electrons would go. So if we had to complete an energy diagram for hydrogen, first we have to know how many electrons hydrogen has. Looking on the periodic table, hydrogen has one electron. So that one electron would go to the 1s. To write the electron configuration, all you do is say, in the 1s, so this is telling me where it's at, I have one electron. And that's the electron configuration for hydrogen. Now let's do one for helium. Helium from the periodic table has two electrons. So they can both go in the 1s, but again, they have to have opposite spins. So my electron configuration, I have in the 1s, I have two electrons. So we go to the 1s, it has two electrons, and now I can move up to the 2s, and I have one. That gives me a total of three. So my electron configuration, I have in the 1s, I have two electrons, and in the 2s, I have one electron. That's my configuration. Your superscripts should always add up to the total number of electrons that element has. So two in the 1s and two in the 2s. One s two, two s two. 
Go ahead and draw Boron's energy diagram and configuration. Restart when you have those done. You should have had two in the 1S, two in the 2S, and one in the 2P. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P1. Go ahead and do oxygen. Restart when you have your answer. So two in the 1S, two in the 2S, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure that your energy diagram looks like that on the screen. You should not have an empty orbital in the 2P. So my configuration is simply 1S2, 2S2, 2P. In the 2P, I have 2, 3, 4. So we do not have to distinguish that they're in separate orbitals in the configuration, only on the energy diagram. I'm going to draw the configuration and energy diagram for neon. Neon has 10 electrons, so it would fill the 1s the 2s and the 2p and so your configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 draw your energy diagram and configuration for sodium so your energy diagram should look like so because sodium has 11 electrons and so that's your configuration I'm going to draw it for phosphorus. So your energy diagram should look like so. Make sure that you have one in each 3P and your electron configuration. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P3. And going to draw iron. And that's what your energy diagram should have looked like. Notice that 4S is lower in energy than 3D. So we have to fill 4S before you can fill 3D. And finally, my configuration. We don't always want to draw an energy diagram to get the electron configuration. Sometimes you'll draw an energy diagram, but most of the time you're just drawing the electron configuration. So without having to do the energy diagram every time you need the configuration, you can read it off the periodic table. Let's say we wanted to do iron again. That black dot is where iron is. If you notice, we have the S block. We have S1, and then helium is S2. So sometimes you'll see helium written there on the periodic table. Then we have 2S and 2P. So we have the S block, the P block. Notice the period number is the number in front of the S and P. So fifth period, 5S, 5P. The Ds are one less than the period number. So if this is 5s, 4d, 7s, 6d. And if you look on the periodic table, it goes 55, 56, 57. So these inner transition metals fit in on the periodic table on the 6th and 7th period. So this one is two less than the period number, as is this one. All right, so let's get back to writing the configuration for iron. First, we're going to read the periodic table like a book. So we go through the 1S. We go all the way through it. It fills up, and S fills with 2. Then we do the 2S. Next, we're going through the 2Ps. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you forget that the P's can hold 6, you just count across right there. After 2P, 
I go through 3S and then 3P. Next is 4X. And finally, I'm in the 3D, but I'm not going all the way through it. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3D6. If we wanted to draw oxygen, here's oxygen. So it's 1S2, 2S2, 2P1, 2, 3, 4. Go ahead and do the electron configuration for sulfur. Restart to check your answer. Sulfur is located there. So we're going to go through the periodic table. First it's 1S, then it's 2S, 2P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3S, 2, 3P, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's your answer. Go ahead and do cadmium, calcium, and bromine on your own. That's your answer for cadmium. Cadmium was here, so we went through the 1S, then 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S, and finally 4D. It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's why it's 4D10. Your answer for calcium should have been 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2. Here's calcium, so it should have ended 4S2. And for bromine, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. 4S2, 3D10, 4P5. We ended there, which is 4P1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go ahead and do sodium, and then do not do B, C, or D yet. And finally, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S1. One thing that sometimes people do is add commas. Do not add commas. That is incorrect. Also, make sure that those are superscripts and these are lowercase. So it shouldn't be like that. So to do the electron configuration for an ion, first thing you need to do is write the configuration for the element. So fluorine's electron configuration. is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So first you write it for the atom. Then we're going to add or lose electrons from the highest energy level. So my highest energy level is 2p5. And so since it's a negative one, it gains an electron. So this five turns into a six. So now fluorine has 10 electrons, which corresponds to with fluorine minus 1. Go ahead and try K plus 1 on your own. Do not do D yet. So this is the electron configuration for potassium atom. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. But it's a positive ion, which means I need to remove an electron. This is my highest energy, and so this one goes away. So that is the electron configuration for potassium ion. Iron is a transition metal, and all your transition metals are going to be slightly different. First, we do write the electron configuration for the atom, though. So write the configuration for iron atom. Restart when you have that done. So this is the electron configuration for iron. 
The tricky thing about it, as well as all your transition metals, is your highest energy is 4, not 3D. So first, I have to remove anything from the highest number, which is my highest energy. So I were to remove the 4s, 2. That's two electrons, and I still have one more needs to lose because it's plus three. So I would remove one from the 3D. I can only remove from the D once my S and P are gone. So if I had a 4P, I would remove it as well. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 3P6, 3D5. It does so because it would remove from the outer ring before it starts removing any from an inner ring because the inner ring is closer to the nucleus. You want to figure out which element you think this electron configuration belongs to. Restart when you have your guess. First off, this electron configuration is not in order. Sometimes when you're given a configuration, they group all of the threes and all the fours together, like they did in this case. Technically, that 4s should be between the 3p and the 3d. It doesn't matter that it's out of order, but I point that out because you can't just look at this last one. In this case, you could have, but that's not going to work 100% of the time. The easiest way to figure out what element this belongs is to add up your exponents. Two plus two is four, plus six is 10, 12, 18, 28, 30, 32. So looking on the periodic table, 32 corresponds to uranium. Excited state simply means that it skipped something. So if we look at it, it doesn't have a 4s, it doesn't have a 4p. There's lots of things missing in this electron configuration. This one is ground state. Ground state simply means it's following the order that it should. It was written in a different order, but everything is accounted for. While excited, something was skipped and it's not in the configuration at all. So figure out what element this one corresponds to. You can figure it out the same way as we did the last one. So since this was excited state, we could not just look at the last one. We had to add up our exponents. We get 30, which goes with zinc. And finally, figure out what element this electron configuration corresponds to. Adding those up, we get 15, and phosphorus has 15 electrons.